Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, on you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. The principle of the best education possible for our children has been one of the basic cornerstones of our nation. But the ever-increasing enrollment in elementary schools has resulted in poor educational conditions in many communities across the country. Most important, there is an insufficiency of elementary school teachers. Teaching is an occupation that is more attractive now than ever before, since there is a growing public interest in education and measures are being taken to improve schools. Such a career offers exceptional opportunities for intelligent, imaginative young men and women who are now in college. The lack of teachers is only one side of this problem. Some places require additional school buildings. Others need more equipment, textbooks, and personnel. If these problems are to be met and solved, the cooperation of every citizen is a must. See what you can do. Better schools build better communities. This message is brought to you as a public service. Sergeant Preston had been called into the office of Inspector Conrad at Mounted Police Headquarters. As the tall, red-coated sergeant entered the office with the great dog Yukon King at his heels, he saw Constable Drake seated in front of the inspector's desk. Sergeant Preston reporting, sir. Oh, yes, Sergeant. You know Constable Drake, of course. I certainly do, sir. How are you, Joe? Fine, Sergeant. Good to see you and King again. <laughs> By golly, King, I just wish I'd had you with me in Faro City these last few months. What's the matter? Trouble of some kind? Plenty of trouble, Sergeant. That's why I sent for you, Sergeant. Pull up a chair and the constable will tell you the whole story. Thank you, sir. What's it all about, Joe? Well, in the last couple of months, the country around Faro City has been terrorized by a gang called the Red Raiders. The Red Raiders? That's right, Sergeant. They got the name because they wear red hoods over their heads whenever they make an appearance. There are four men in the gang. They've committed a whole series of crimes, but so far I haven't been able to get a lead on them. Frankly, the situation has gotten completely out of hand. They must have a hideout somewhere in the vicinity. Sure, but I can't find it. There's only one answer to the situation, Sergeant. King. The Red Raiders may be able to cover their tracks, but there's no way they can cover up their scent. If King is on hand next time they pull a job, he'll be able to find their hideout. How soon can you be ready to hit the trail, Sergeant? Within the hour, sir. Very well. As soon as you're ready, I want you to start for Pharaoh City with Constable Drake. The case is in your hands, Sergeant. And I'll be counting on you and King to bring the Red Raiders to justice. Pharaoh City was a sprawling, rough-and-ready mining community located at the mouth of Pharaoh Creek, several days' travel east of Dawson. When Sergeant Preston and Constable Drake arrived in the vicinity, the sergeant turned off the trail and headed up into the hills overlooking the town. Looking! I'm going to make camp here for the time being, Joe. You're not coming in town with me? No, it'll be better not to put the gang on guard. I'll find out King's on hand ready to trail him. They'll have to lie low for a while. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. I'll wait here until I hear from you. As soon as the gang makes another move, get word to me. Right, Sergeant. Until then, so long. Bye, Joe. All right, Proxy. Line the team. Now, much. Alan Sawyer was the son of Luke Sawyer, who ran the general store in Faro City. He was playing out in front of the store when he saw Constable Drake and his team coming along the trail that led into the main street of town. 
Constable Drake. He's back from Dawson. I'll go in and tell Dad. Luke Sawyer was behind the counter, and several miners were gossiping around the pot bellied stove as Alan burst in with the news. Hey, Dad, Constable Drake's coming. Constable Drake? You mean he's back from Dawson? That's right, Dad. I can see him coming up the trail. Is Sergeant Preston with him? No, he's all alone. Oh, Dad, burn it all. That's why he went to Dawson, to get the sergeant and game. Oh, maybe the sergeant's coming later. Yeah, well, maybe so. Come on, let's go out and get the news. A small knot of onlookers gathered quickly as the constable brought his team to a halt in front of the store. Where's Sergeant Preston, constable? I thought you were going to bring him and King back from Dawson with you. Yeah, what happened? I'm sorry, folks, but Sergeant Preston wasn't able to come to Faro City right now. But doggone it, constable, we were counting on him to do something about the Red Raiders. We'll never catch those seven pole cats unless we have the sergeant and King here to trail them. I know, I know, Luke. But it just so happens the sergeant's been assigned to an important case. So until Sergeant Preston gets here, I'll just have to do the best I can. There's nothing I can do about it. Among the crowd that had gathered around Constable Drake was a small, sharp-nosed man known as Mouse Willard. As soon as he heard the news about Sergeant Preston, he slipped away and hurried to the Gold Nugget Cafe. <laughs> A big black mustached man with a flowered waistcoat was playing cards with several of the customers. Mouse went up and tapped him on the shoulder. Hey, it's Jeff. <laughs> oh, howdy, Mouse. I'd like to have a word with you. How about coming in the back room? I reckon that can be arranged. Well, gents, I got business to attend. I'm afraid you'll have to wait till later. What? Get your money back. Oh, that's fine. Come on, Come on. All right, Mouse, let's go. Oh, what's up? I've got good news, Jeff. Oh, let's hear it. We won't have to worry about Sergeant Preston and that dog of his after all. How come? Constable Drake just got back to town. He told the crowd over the general store that Preston had been assigned to an important case, so he wasn't able to come to Faro City right now. <laughs> that is good news. In that case, I reckon it'll be safe to go ahead with our plan to rob the Faro Queen mine. <clears throat> That's going to be a mighty risky job, Jeff. Don't worry. I got the whole thing figured out. Well, when do you think we ought to pull off the job? We'll pull it off tonight. Go around to Bat and Corky and tell them to go on out to the cave. All right. I'll give you all the details when we get there. A short time later, Alan Sawyer was greeted by another boy named Bert Carey in front of the general store. Hey, Alan! Hi, Bert. Where you been all day? I was looking for you. Oh, I had to run an errand for my mother. She wanted me to take something over to old Granny Carter at Terrible Pass. Oh, boy, oh, boy, you know what I found? How should I know? I found a secret cave. A secret cave? Yeah, and it ought to make a swell hiding place. No one will ever be able to find it. If it's so secret, how did you ever find it? Well, I was chasing a snowshoe rabbit, and it disappeared in some underbrush that was growing right up close to the side of the hill. I went after it, and by golly, I found out that in back of the underbrush, there's an opening that leads into a cave. You can't see it at all from the trail. Gee, that sounds swell. What's the cave like inside? I don't know. I just went in a little way. It was so dark I couldn't see anything. I thought we could get a candle and go out and explore it. That's a good idea. I can get a candle for my dad. Come on in the store a second. I'll get one. Okay. After obtaining a candle, the two boys left town and headed up into the hills in the direction of Caribou Pass. An hour later, they reached the spot where the cave was located. I'll pull this underbrush aside. There. See? Golly, you're right. Let's go inside. All right. Oh, it sure is dark in here. Let's light the candle. Okay, I have it inside my parka. Here it is. I'll strike a match. Gee Willikins, look at the size of this cave. It must go way into the hillside. Let's see how far back it goes. Sure, we'll explore it. Watch out you don't trip over any of those rocks. Bert, look. A big bundle of stuff wrapped in oil skin. Let's see what's inside it. Wait till I unwrap it. Jumping catfish, guns and ammunition. Well, that's not all. Look at these red hoods. They have eye slits in them. Oh, golly, Ellen. 
Are you thinking the same thing I'm thinking? This must be the hideout of the Red Raiders. We better go back to town right away and notify the constable. Bert, listen. Well, they're stopping right outside the cave. I'll bet it's the Red Raiders. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. There he goes, stealing second base. Boy, what a slide. He's safe at second. Wow, kids, what excitement at a ball game. What fun to see real major or minor league ball games and the star players in person. Why miss these thrills? Come on out to the ball game as guest of your favorite team. Right now, you can get baseball tickets to get in the ballpark free if you're 12 years or younger. Just bring mom or dad a paying adult. Here's all you do to get your free ticket. Get a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Tear off the box top and send with your name and address to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Details are on every ticket. Why, the whole family would have the time of their life at the ball game. For your free ticket, just send a box top from Quaker puffed wheat or rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Send the guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10 and you'll get two free tickets. Send to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Don't miss the big game. Send now. Now to continue. Alan Sawyer and his friend Bert Carey had just discovered that the cave which they were exploring was the secret hideout of the Red Raiders. While they were examining the gang's cache of weapons, they heard the sound of dog teams being halted just outside the cave entrance. I'll bet it's the Red Raiders. Golly, what are we going to do? We'd better hide, quick, over behind those big rocks. Okay, but first we'll have to wrap up these guns and so there won't know anyone's been here. Yeah, you're right. After hastily wrapping up the gang's equipment, the two boys snuffed out the candle and scurried to a hiding place behind a group of large rocks. They had barely ducked out of sight when four men made their way into the cave. The leader, who was carrying a lantern in one hand, was the gambler Jeff Hearn. The others were Mouse Willard and a pair of crooks called Bat and Corky. All right, gents. Uh, squat down make yourselves comfortable. I'll put the lantern here on. Uh, right. Mouse tells us you want to go ahead and wrap the very queen tonight, Jeff. Yeah, that's right, Bat. Now that Preston and his dog aren't going to show up, there's no reason to hold off any longer. It'd be a good night for it, all right. Sure it will, Corky. Starting to snow a bit already. From the looks of the sky, there'll be a lot more coming down to cover our tracks. A yeah, perfect night for the Red Raiders to make another strike. You got the job all planned out, Jeff? Sure. Now, here's how we'll work it. Hey, what was that? Must be somebody hiding behind those rocks. Stand up and show yourself, whoever you are. Or we'll come back there and spray you with lead. And come up, reach it. Don't shoot, mister. We what? Hey, it's a couple of kids. That fair-haired one is Luke Sawyer's boy. And the kid with him is Bert Carey. This old man's the foreman of the Pearl Queen. What in thunder are you doing here in this cave? We weren't doing anything. We just happened to find it, that's all. How come you were hiding behind those rocks? We got scared. I bet they found our guns and hoods, Jeff. Yeah, that, they must have heard everything we were saying. Come on over here. What are you going to do to us? Well, we can't turn them loose, Jeff. They'll spill the beans about us being the Red Raiders. I don't intend to turn them loose. What do you got in mind? Well, bad. Like you were saying a minute ago... This one kid here is Bert Carey. His old man is Doug Carey, the foreman of the Ferro Queen Mine. So? We'll hold the kids prisoner here at the hideout. When they don't get home tonight, search parties will start out looking for them. More than likely, Carey will turn out every mine hand at the Ferro Queen to join the search. Yeah. Which same will leave us a clear field for the robbery. That's right. I never thought of that. Well, go on. All right. Thing. Get busy. Tie them up. Now, I'll tell you how we'll pull the job. That evening, when the boys failed to return home for supper, their worried fathers joined forces and made a hasty search of all the likely spots where their boys might have gone, but without success. Finally, Luke said, Doggone it, Doug, I'm getting downright worried about those two young'uns. What do you suppose could have happened to them? I'm beginning to think they must have had an accident of some kind. If we don't find them, they'll freeze to death in weather like this. I thunder, Luke, we better get out some search parties for them right away. Good idea. I'll go see the constable and get him to help organize it. All right, you do that. Now go back to the Pharaoh Queen and turn out all the mine hands. Luke hurried to the constable's cabin and knocked on the door. Oh, good evening, Luke. Come in, come in. Yeah, constable. Why, is something wrong? Sure is. 
My boy Alan and young Bert Carey are lost. Lost? Yeah. Doug and I have looked all over for them and can't find them. When did you see them last? Not since early afternoon. How about helping us organize some search parties for them? Maybe I can do better than that. What do you mean? Sergeant Preston is camped in the hills outside of town. He has well, King with him. What's that? I was supposed to keep it a secret so as not to put the Red Raiders on guard. But when the sergeant finds out your boys are lost, I'm sure he'll want to put King on their trail, gang or no gang. My golly, Doug and I will sure be great. Will I get my partner? We'll get some search parties started, then I'll go out to the sergeant's camp. Sergeant Preston was just preparing to turn in for the night when Constable Ross arrived at his camp. Oh, 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 oh. Something happened? Yes, Sergeant. This time it's not the Red Raiders. I've disobeyed orders, Sergeant. What are you talking about? Well, you told me to keep it a secret that you were camped here. Yes? But two boys are lost. Who are they? Little Alan Sawyer and his friend Bert Carey. So I told Alan's dad about you being here with King. I thought you might be willing to trail him. Of course. This may mean the Red Raiders will find out you're here. Well, never mind that. Finding two lost boys in a weather like this is much more important than keeping my presence here a secret. Search parties are formed already, so the town will be almost empty when we get there. Maybe we can slip in without anyone noticing. All right, I'll hitch my team. We'll get started. As Constable Craig had predicted, the town was almost deserted when the two Mounties arrived there. To avoid attracting attention, they halted their teams in the darkness behind the general store and knocked on the back door. Sergeant Preston and King. Hello, Luke. By thunder, I sure am glad to see you. Come on in. Thanks for bringing him here, Constable. Anybody in front of the store, Luke? No, the place is empty. When the search party started out, I told him I was going to wait till you got back. Did you tell them that he went to get me and King? No, I just said he'd gone out to follow up a special lead, and I was going to wait and see how it turned out. Good. Now, do you have something that Alan's worn recently? I sure do, Sergeant. Come on through to the front of the store, and I'll get it for you. All right. As they reached the front of the store, Luke picked up a sweater that was lying on the counter. Will this do, Sergeant? It ought to. Here, King. Get the scent. Fine, boy, fine. All right, he has it. Which way, fellow? They must have headed north into the hills. Come on, Joe, we'll follow the trail. Right, Sergeant. And I'm going with you. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Hey, kids, do you know you can come out to the ball game as guest of your favorite team? See all the players in person whose pictures you see on the sport page or the screen. Watch those thrilling homers sail into the grandstands. Watch the exciting double plays and eat hot dogs and drink pop with a cheering crowd. Yes, count yourself in on the fun. Right now, you can get into the ballpark free if you are 12 years or younger. Just bring a paying adult like mom or dad. To get your free ticket, get a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Tear off the box top and send with your name and address to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. You'll get two free tickets by sending the guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10. Details are on every ticket. Hurry, send a box top from Quaker puffed wheat or rice or Muffet shredded wheat or the guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10. Send to baseball, box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Don't wait. Be a guest of your favorite team. The snowfall had somewhat dispersed the scent. And several times, King lost the boy's trail. But each time, the great dog worked patiently back and forth until he had picked up the scent once again. Finally, he reached the spot where the cave was located. Oh, 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 oh. He's just found something, Sergeant. He's nosing in the brush against the hillside. Great day. You don't Steady, suppose... Steady, Luke. Wait till I get a lantern. We'll see what he's found. The sergeant lighted a hurricane lantern, and then the three men proceeded to examine the underbrush. <laughs> Holy smoke. There's an entrance to a cave back of this brush. I'd better go first with this lantern. Crouching low to get through the underbrush, the men made their way forward into the cave. As the rays of the lantern lighted up the inky darkness of the interior, all three men gave a gasp of surprise. What? 
Jumping Jupiter, it's the boys. They're all tied up and gagged. Come on, they must be half frozen. Help me get them untied. Thanks, a few oh, moments later, right. the robes and gags have been removed. The boys were unharmed, but badly shaken by the experience they had undergone. Oh, golly, Dad. I was never so glad to see anyone in my whole life. That goes double for me, son. And I sure am grateful to you and King, Sergeant. Forget it, Luke. Well, where's my dad, Sergeant? He's with a search party looking for you, son. We'll get you home as soon as possible. But first, suppose you tell us what happened. We were exploring this cave when all of a sudden the Red Raiders showed up. What? What's that? Red Raiders? Yes, sir. This cave is their hideout. We found their guns and the red hoods that they wear. We tried to duck out of sight when they came, but Bert sneezed and gave us away. I tried not to, but I couldn't help it. Sergeant, they're planning to raid the Feral Queen mine tonight. Did you hear them say so? Yes, sir. We heard them talking all about it. They intended to keep us here as hostages in case anything went wrong. Did you recognize any of them? Yes, sir. The leader's that gambler, Jeff Hearn. Oh. And one of them is a man named Mouse Willard. I've seen him in the store lots of times. The other two are called Bat and Corky. Luke, will you take the boys back to town on your sled? Of course, Sergeant. But what about you two? The constable and I had better head for the Pharaoh Queen. Meanwhile, the four crooks were hiding in a dense clump of trees on the hillside overlooking the Pharaoh Queen mine. They waited silently until the torchlit search parties along the creek scattered out into the surrounding countryside. And then Jeff Hearn gave the order to advance. All right, boys. Looks like the coast is clear. We'll get our teams and head down the hill to the mine office. All right. A short time later, the watchman in the mine office heard the sound of teams being halted outside. Oh, must be one of the search parties coming back. Now go take a look. Get your hands up, mister. Holy mackerel, the Red Raiders. Yeah, we're the Red Raiders, all right. Don't go trying any fast moves or we'll plug you. Now start backing up into the office. Corky, stay outside and keep a lookout. Right, boys. Well, what are you aiming to do? Shut up. All right, boys. Tie him up, then we'll go to work on the safe. The safe was strongly built, but after a half hour's work under the expert direction of Mouse Willard, who had been a safe cracker back in the state, yeah. it yielded up its contents. Just look at all the coal inside there, boy. She's really loaded. Man alive, we've made a real haul this time. Well, we can gloat over it later on. Let's carry it out to the sled. My thunder, I thought I recognized your voice. What's that? I mean, uh, I thought I recognized it, but I was mistaken. Yeah. Just who did you think I was? Why, uh, a fella I know named Robinson. And Jack Robinson, I suppose. He's lying, boss. I'll bet he really does know you. Uh... Yeah, maybe so. I better not take any chances with you, mister. I'll shut you up right now. No, no, don't shoot me. Hey, boss. What's up? All right, those coming down the hill, heading straight for the mine. What's huh? that? That's not all. I saw them up on the crest of the hill for a minute and it looked to me like they were monies. Holy what? mackerel. We better clear out fast. Yeah. Get that gold out on a slide pronto. Right. What about the watchman here? You gonna plug him? No, I got a better idea. We'll take him along. If things get too hot, we can use him for a shield. Now come on, start moving. All right, come on. A few moments later, as the two Mounties neared the bottom of the hill, they saw the crooks preparing to make their getaway. Sergeant, look. They're wearing hoods. Yes, it's the Red Raiders, all right. They're getting away. On King, fast the boy. Stop in the name of the Kong. They want to shoot it out. We may as well oblige them. The crooks had to turn and fire hastily over their shoulders, and at the same time keep control of their sleds. As a result, their bullets were going wild. Mounties, who were firing straight ahead, could take careful aim. You got one of them, Sergeant. And there's one for you, Joe. When we reach the two wounded men, stop and take charge of them. Right. I'll go on after the others. Right. It was Bat and Corky who had fallen wounded. Jeff Hearn was carrying the watchman on his sled, and the weight slowed him down. Right. Glancing over his shoulder, he saw that the constable had stopped, but that Sergeant Preston was gaining steadily. Hey, Mount, stop your team! Are you crazy? My six shooter's empty. I know where I'm going. One of the Mounties has dropped back. Now's the time to make use of this guy on my sled. Okay, Jeff, I sure hope you know what you're doing. Whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa! Yukon King, racing ahead of the sergeant's team, saw the crooks bring their sleds to a halt. Without slackening his pace, the intelligent dog darted in among the trees bordering the foot of the slope. Meanwhile, Jeff Hearn had yanked the watchman off his sled and whirled to face the sergeant, using the watchman as a shield. Don't come any closer, Mountie, or I'll plug this guy. He means it too, sergeant. You better stop or he'll shoot me. As the sergeant halted his team, Mouse was frantically trying to reload his gun. He had dropped behind his sled for protection. 
sergeant shouted to Jeff. What do you think you're going to do now? If you want this guy to keep on living, throw your gun over this way. Sorry, I have other plans. Take him, King. With a ferocious snarl, King charged out of the underbrush straight at Jeff Hearn. Help! Help me, Mouse! At that moment, Mouse finished reloading and raised up slightly for a shot at King. But in doing so, he exposed himself to the sergeant's fire. As Mouse dropped his gun and clutched his arm in agony, the watchman pulled free from Jeff Hearn's grasp. The sudden move pulled Jeff off balance, and King promptly knocked him to the ground. Get this dog off me! Call him off, Marty! Keep him down, King! Okay, Sergeant, I have the guns. All right, King, good work, boy. Let him up now. On your feet, mister. The end of the trail for you and your raiders. You're under arrest in the name of the Crown. Later, after the prisoners had been handcuffed together and their hoods had been removed, Sergeant Preston and the watchman herded them back to the spot where Constable Drake was attending to the other two crooks. How about it, Joe? Are they badly wounded? They'll live to stand trial, Sergeant. Aye, Thunder, I sure hope I get a chance to testify against them. You'll have that chance, and so will all their other victims. When the Red Raiders have been sentenced for their crimes, this case will be closed. There's Roaring Adventure on Mutual. Tales that will take your breath away and transport you into lands where danger is your constant companion. First, we take you far up into the barren Yukon territory of yesterday, where icy winds and howling wolves are enough to drive a man wild, and civilized ways are gone in an ever-present lust for gold. Now let's go to another lawless world, the west of early frontier days. Not so cold, but which makes up for the freezing temperatures with trigger-tense tempers, where the gun is a man's lease on life. This is a country which abounds with cattle rustlers and where miles and miles go by before you see any signs of life. The West, beautiful but wild, a land which cries out for the hand of the law. You will never lack for adventure on Mutual, whether it freezes you with fear in the wild Northwest Territory or singes you with the acrid heat of the Western Plains. It's all on Mutual every week over most of these stations. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. Mm-hmm.